One of the problems for visually impaired people is being able to tell when the light is green or they're allowed to walk to cross the street. A company called IAS is working on a product called OCO that is supposed to make this easy. And I am standing here with Michael Janssen, who is from Belgium. We love Belgians, of course, on the PodFeed podcast. And so he's going to tell us about it. Describe how this works. Yeah, sure. Hey, nice to meet you, everyone. I'm Michael, indeed one of the founders of a company called IAS. Um, we basically started off two years ago. We have a Bayern family friend in Belgium, and he told us about the challenge of crossing the street in a safe way um, and that's why we've developed a mobile app of course these days only on iPhone but basically what we do is we use a camera of your smartphone and artificial intelligence to analyze the pedestrian traffic light status so we convey the walk signal or the don't walk signal through audio and haptic feedback such that they know whenever it's safe to cross. Oh, that is really cool. Now, I, we've just traveled to other countries. Those signs are different everywhere you go. I mean, in Argentina, there were like 11 different things it showed. But in the U.S., I th is it fairly standardized? It's fairly standardized, but it's completely different than, for example, in Belgium or just throughout Europe. And that's why it took us so, uh, so long to uh, make the AI as good as it is in Europe and translate that in the U.S. So we're... Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, it's different everywhere. Yeah, because our service is already live for about now a year ago um, in, the, in Europe. And now we're uh, three weeks here in the U.S., so that's pretty exciting. And before we got started, you were explaining that a lot of traffic lights do have like an audio beep telling mm -hmm. you you're allowed to walk or don't walk or a clicking sound, but that's not standardized and you said it's not very well maintained as well. Yeah, there's not a lot to uh, correct. There's not too, uh, a lot of those audible speakers. That's actually the problem uh, or the biggest problem. But of course, indeed, if there are there, the maintenance is uh, not maintained well, so they're not always working. So that's a very frustrating thing if you're relying on that service. And of course, our service doesn't need to have something installed at a traffic light because we literally look at a sighted person at the traffic light and convey that information back. Very cool. So we're going to try to do a quick demo here. Um, we've got, he's got a traffic light uh, up ab above us. It's got a little, little walking person right now. And uh, do you want to zoom in here, Steve, on the, uh, on the screen? So he's holding the, uh, he's holding the phone bit. up <laughs> to look at the uh, traffic light. Maybe we have to get farther away <laughs> because in reality, you're, the, you're really far is. away, right? Yeah, indeed, indeed. So describe what we're seeing on screen. Yeah, so the screen lits up green to indicate the walk signal is on. Um, but of course, there's also an audible and a vibration cue. Um, it's a very fast tone to indicate the walk signal. And the don't walk signal is the same pattern, but much slower. So a very slow beep to indicate that wa uh, don't walk signal. Okay, how about that? Run, 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 hurry, the light's about to change <laughs> signal. Does it do that too? No, no, yeah, no. And but I, think I mean, like, if it's, got, if it's got a countdown, what does ah, it tell you? The countdown signal is some sort of a timer, tick tock, tick tock, counting down to just indicate that either you should hurry up and finish your crossing or do not uh, start your crossing if you're just about to enter the crosswalk. So we always are there to convey more information. Um, it's not on a replacement of orientation and mobility or a wide cane or a guide dog. We're just an as another tool on the assistive technology belt, let's say. Um, I think a very important aspect, and that's what uh, a lot of Americans like here, the moment that you start veering off, which is a critical thing as, as a blind people, um, the phone will become silent. So if you're rotating to the right or to the left, your phone will become silent. And that means that you're veering off into traffic. Oh, off, of the, off of the crosswalk. Off, off the crosswalk indeed. And so what most people do, they'll just put the phone against the chest, the camera looking in the direction that you're walking in. And so if you're crossing, the walk signal is on and you're veering off, it will become silent. And oh, that means that people need nice. to reorient themselves to find the traffic light or our system will find the traffic light, of course. Um, and that means that you always need to follow the sound or the vibration to reach the other side of the road. And it was actually in Milwaukee two weeks ago that there was a blind user that mentioned it's the first time in my life, and she's 2022, 20, um, that she was able to cross the street in a safe, uh, straight way with our application. With confidence. Yeah. Wow, that is really, really cool. And the, the fact that the whole screen turns green is it's somebody listening might think, well, you're blind. What good is it being green? But low vision as well, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. A bright green six-inch rectangle, yeah. you're, you're gonna, a lot of people would be able to notice that where they don't have the visual acuity mm -hmm. to see the sign itself. Yeah, that's indeed intended for people with low vision to just maximize their wrist feces and just look at their phone rather than a couple of feet at distance to, uh, to analyze the traffic light itself. This is very cool. So you can download uh, OKO. It's OKO in the uh, in the App Store for the iPhone. Yeah. Nothing for Android though. 
Nothing for Android at the moment. Of course, Apple has been a pioneer in accessibility. And I think a very important aspect, our software runs locally on the phone. So no Wi-Fi, no cellular connection is required. And Android is still not there yet. Um, and that's why we, as a young company, focus on the uh, iPhone these I days. wondered why you were willing to do a live demo, because everybody else is going, oh, I can't do that, because, you know, the, the Wi-Fi and cellular in here exactly, isn't good yeah. enough. But uh, you don't that's use a, that, that's so that's a, proof that's a of beauty, it. That's the beauty of it. It's such a scalable thing. It doesn't require uh, the Wi-Fi or cellular connection, and that's the beauty. What's the cost of using OCO? So we charge it for free to the user. Our vision is, if sighted people do not need to pay to look at the traffic light, why do blind and visually impaired people? Um, our mission is to find B2B or B2G partners, so working with cities or healthcare partners. Same is true for Belgium, our home country. The app is there reimbursed for all users across, uh, across the yeah, state, let's say. So that's amazing. That's fantastic. Well, uh, this, is, this is really cool. I'm, I'm going to download it and take a look and see what it does myself. So it's OKO, and thank you very much for helping us thank out. Thank you very much. <laughs>